The Ministry of Education establishes an internet presence, media trained in IPO commission operations, and Dominica pilot program for climate resilience set to boost local employment. Thank you for joining us on another edition of National Focus. I'm Nisha Chow. And I'm Kadisha St. Louis. Stay with us for details of the headline stories and others after this. Real men protect children, not harm them. Under the Convention of the Rights of a Child, a child is anyone under the age of 18, and it's sexual abuse if you ask to see or touch their private parts, touch them inappropriately, show them or force them to touch your private parts, have sex with them, show them pornographic material, or deliberately let them hear or see the act of sex. Real men don't abuse children, and they don't encourage others to do it either. Be a real man. For more information, please contact these agencies. This message brought to you by UNICEF and this station. The Ministry of Education and Human Resource Development has gone online. The Ministry launched its new website on Monday with the hope of providing a resource base for teachers, principals, students and parents, as well as other members of the public. The Honorable Education Minister Peter Seja welcomed the upgrade. The Ministry of Education, one of the lead ministries within the government service, we felt it absolutely necessary that uh, we cannot expose our children to the technology and that the ministry operates without uh, a website and so the justification for setting up this uh, website. The website features extensive content targeted at education stakeholders who wish to access information and other resource material. The public can now access application forms to join the teaching service as well as assistance from the Education Trust Fund. Stakeholders can also access the laws which guide the education sector here in Dominica. Also on the website, one will find contact information for all of our schools here in Dominica. And there are several links which will take users to our key development partners, including the Dominica State College and the Caribbean Examination Council, CXC. Student achievements, as well as other accomplishments at our various schools and within the Ministry of Education will be highlighted on a regular basis. The website is a collaborative effort between the offices of the Education Management Information System and the Ministry's Public Relations Arm with support from the government's ICT unit. To access the website, log on to www.education.gov.dm. The Integrity in Public Office Commission has taken action to contribute towards the continued edification of the media. The Commission organized a training session last Friday for media personnel on the Integrity in Public Office Act. The training session began with a presentation from the IPU Commission Chairman Julian Johnson on the operations of the Commission. He began by answering the question of why the media are being targeted for training. Sometimes the mass media can get it wrong. Sometimes the media can be unfair and can serve sectional interests, but a responsible, objective, vibrant, free and courageous media does play a very important role in the guaranteeing of proper standards in public life in liberal democracies. The Commission also believes that it is the media's duty to monitor the workings of government and parliament on the public's behalf, hence the need for a well-informed press. The IPO Commission is responsible for the administration of the Integrity in Public Office Act, which took effect September 1, 2008. That purpose, as stated by parliament, is to provide for the establishment of an Integrity Commission for the purpose of receiving declarations on the financial affairs of persons in holding specific positions in public life for the purpose of establishing probity, integrity, and accountability 
in public life in the Commonwealth of Dominica and for related matters. The six-year-old Integrity in Public Office Commission is mainly responsible for receiving, examining, and retaining financial declarations of persons in public life. It is also responsible for investigating complaints related to non-compliance with the Act. The Commission comprises seven reputable persons of high public standing, five appointed on the advice of politicians and two non-political appointees. GIS News will bring you more in a subsequent newscast. When physical work begins as part of the pilot program for Climate Resilience Project, PPCR, many Dominicans stand to begin fully employed, particularly in the east of the country. The pilot program for Climate Resilience is a World Bank Climate Investment Fund and Government of Dominica funded project. Under this initiative, EC $103 million will be spent to build resilience against the impact of climate change. Eight water storage tanks for the West Coast Water Supply Project will need to be built. Work on this is expected to start soon. We are now completing the standard building documents for these water tanks. Um, we have engaged Dovasco uh, in the land acquisition process. We have identified the land owners already. The surveys for the lands where the um, tanks are going to be constructed have already been um, completed. And um, once we, con we, 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 uh, well, we terminate the process of the land acquisition and uh, the, the payment process and everything, then we will start the, the, process of, uh, well, the bidding process for the uh, construction of the um, water tanks. Contracts will also be awarded for the construction of 30 storm drains. Currently, the Ministry of Works has, is undertaking the process of um, prioritizing um, those that has to be undertaken as soon as possible, as a matter of urgency. So, um, I can stand storm drains. So, they are now in the process of developing the terms of references for the design of the storm drains. So, once we have completed the the, um, the design, uh, um, the, the terms of references for the design of the storm drains, we will um, commence the, the the process of um, the um, construction of the storm drains. Yeah. So, we expect that activity to be undertaken during the later on this year. Once we, 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 on, uh, we undertake um, the uh, standard, the, uh, the bidding process, um, local consultants are free to, 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 to participate in, this, in the bidding process. Uh, for matter, they, they will be given priority. But according to project coordinator Colin Geese, the majority of civil works is not expected to start until 2016. Meantime, project coordinator Colin Geese says the team will soon meet residents of the Kalinago territory to discuss the implications of impending roadworks in that area under the project. The project includes road rehabilitation and slope stabilization for Pocasse to Boisdiab, Boisdiab to Casibrus, Casibrus to Petit Soufrier, and Casibrus to Hatton Garden through the Kalinago territory. We are now developing, in the process of developing what we call the, Indig the IPP, Indigenous Peoples Plan which um, would indicate specific uh, activities and engagement uh, for, the, for the Kalinago people. Like, for instance, um, some of them will be um, well, trained because some of them, because of, of their, some of their, their, their livelihoods might be impacted, like the vendors that are selling the arts and craft, um, their livelihood might be impacted because uh, we have to do some stop stabilizing, some drainage and all this sort of stuff activity. Uh, we are looking at how best to compensate them during the period of activity. Um, how to engage some of the um, people, the natives from the, from the Kalinago territory, um, into um, incorporate them into uh, uh, the activities, physical activities when the road work starts there. Uh, um, like similar to what we call the, um, the NAP program, something of that nature. At the end of this project, Dominica is expected to build resilience against the impacts of climate change. Locals are expected to benefit from employment throughout the life of this project, which will last six years. From 2000, the Dominica Labour Party government embarked on a series of policies and programs to ensure that agriculture remained a contributing sector to the economy. Primary among them was the policy of diversification and increasing of export, reaching out to farmers to diversify their produce. As a result, in December of 2014, the Ministry of Agriculture imported three varieties of white potato, Sponter, Shifting, and the Challenger, as a means of encouraging farmers to diversify. 
Funding for this activity has been sourced from the Canadian Hunger Fund Propel Project. The promotion of regional opportunities for produce through enterprises and linkages Propel Project is helping 28,000 small-scale Caribbean producers in over seven Caribbean countries, including Dominica, to meet the quality, quantity, and food safety needs of buyers in a consistent and reliable way year-round. Last week, Propel technical officers from the Propel office in Jamaica and individuals from the Division of Agriculture visited the farm of Fitzroy Lloyd in Bellevue Chopin. Lloyd's farm was selected as an area best suited for the maximum growth of these experimental crop varieties. Lloyd, who makes his living from farming, also grows two other varieties of potato. The other two varieties we have around is the Desiree and the El Mono. They are the ones that at my back and um, as you can see, um, they're in their tuber, their tuberization stages. In other words, when I say that, um, I mean that um, they're starting to bear food. That's why you see them with flowers and um, also you will see them with seeds. Um, for some people that don't know much about the crop, it's a very um, good crop. Yeah, it entails a lot of work, a lot, a lot of dedication and hard work. And um, I've been doing that from since 1987, so to speak. He expects that the island may possibly have its own seed for planting by mid-year 2015. Technical officer Alvin Murray and Julius Polius are also confident that one of the three varieties will soon be added to Dominica's production list. The Division of Agriculture has been involved in white potato production for over 30 years. The government of Dominica continues to invest in agricultural pursuits such as these to increase a farmer's production, which ultimately contributes to foreign exchange earnings, ensures food security for the island in the event of natural disasters, creates jobs in rural areas, and establishes linkages with tourism and cultural industries. So, Kadisha, you know, earlier on in the package, we spoke of government moving towards the Ministry of Education having their own website, you know. And I've always said that the Ministry of Education has always been about access, better access, quality access to education. And this is just another step in the right direction. And that's right, you know, students here and abroad who want access to their documents, to, you know, certain um, forms that they don't have access to unless they have to wait, you know, for it to be sent over. And that could be such a timely thing. It's better for them now because just at the click of their fingers, they have access to all the information that they need. And it's not just the Ministry of Education being a key ministry in government, but it's other governments, other ministries in the government are coming on board with the e-government, you know, because government is trying very much for all Dominicans to have better access, quality access to the information that it is available at the tip of their fingers. Yes, and it also speaks of the government's thirst towards, you know, the 21st century. It's all about technology, you know, the government giving tablets, you know, students in schools, almost all schools now have resource centers that they can use to access information online. So all that speaks about how hard the government is trying to push us into the 21st century and make life here better. So hats off to the government and hats off to the Ministry of Education. The Dominica Football Association, DFA, in collaboration with the sports division, is making good on its promise to help nurture women's football on island. On Friday, a donation of footballs was made to a number of schools. This is in response to a lack of equipment identified by the DFA. John Joseph is a youth officer for the DFA. In DFA's continued effort to um, develop the sport of football in Dominica, and specifically this morning, women's football. Um, we are again going to make a contribution to, to that effort. Uh, I must say um, the, the women's football, uh, in especially the secondary school women's football in collaboration with the sports division, um, we have been organizing this competition for the last four years. Um, this year is the fourth year. And we have seen um, the benefits and the fruits from, from this um, involvement in, in, in the sports of football for women. We have seen a number of players um, move on from this program and right now on the, on the national teams. And we just um, want to appreciate um, the efforts that has been made by everybody involved because uh, we need to set a good foundation uh, with, with, the, with the young people, the young um, persons involved in football that we can move on uh, when, they, when they get older. He says the DFA is mindful of what is necessary to develop women's football. Hence, a few years ago, the decision was made to start training at secondary schools. He highlighted that plans are in motions for an under-15 women's football competition. 
in the future and later this year, we are also going to introduce a under 15 uh, women's competition, which we believe will uh, assist even, even more in terms of the overall development. Because what we find is that starting at the secondary school with the under 17 um, girls uh, or the secondary school competition, you find that the, some, most of the girls are just starting or they're just getting their first time playing football um, in the secondary school and, and by the time they leave the school they, are not, um, they don't reach their full potential. So we are looking at targeting the, the, the girls at a younger age. So well, by the end of this year we would have organized an under 15 um, girls league and also we are also targeting the under 13s. We have already had two um, under 13s women's festivals. We have one, one left to do in the Rosal area. And all this is in effort to, to scout the talents of, of young persons and to introduce them to, to football. And we believe that by doing that and starting at the under 13s and the under 15, by the time they get into the secondary school, they would have had that foundation that we can see an improvement in the, in the, in the level of playing in secondary schools. Joseph notes that coaches have been assigned to assist secondary school coaches for the secondary schools league. The schools receiving the equipment were the Dominica Grammar School, the Portsmouth Secondary School, the Orion Academy, the Goodwill Secondary School, the Pierre Charles Secondary School, the Castle Bruce High School, the St. Martin's Academy, the Wesley High School, and the Northeast Comprehensive School. President of the DFA, Glenn Etienne, says the equipment donated is intended to boost women's football in secondary schools. Over the many years, the DFA has given tremendous support to girls' football at the secondary school. Recently, all the schools were given complete kit and other materials gathered enhancing their participation in the secondary school girls' league. Now the equipment that you will receive is aimed at boosting the women's football at the secondary school. We in the DFA are very pleased with the progress that is being made at the secondary school. The number of persons who have participated in this competition is very clear that the women's and girls' football is on the rise, and it shows the interest that girls' football is generating. Let me encourage those who have already involved to continue their involvement and to encourage more young girls to take part in the sport, since it can prove to be beneficial if one puts in the required amount of work. Etienne reaffirmed the DFA's commitment to the development of women's football and the organization hopes that by the end of March, equipment will be sourced from FIFA. And that's the English news. McPherson said Luce is up next with the Creole highlights. Hello, good moon. Bienvenue à ce nouvel Ocreol. Non moi, c'est McPherson said Luce. Premièrement, ministre d'éducation lancé en website 9. Si le ministre de l'Éducation, Honorable Peter Saint-Jean, le website est là qui a plus d'informations qui concerne le ministre de l'Éducation. Le website là, est www.education.gov.dm. Et bon matin, là, ça nous a dit que le ministre de l'Éducation a lancé ça, nous a créé un website. Uh, ça, c'est là, nous pouvons trouver des informations, différentes informations contre le uh, ministre de l'Éducation. Et nous avons créé qui tant oui, la ministre de l'Éducation en doit faire provision pour ni toute qualité d'information à sur uh, Internet, là, à sur un, un website. Le uh, monde public là, peut trouver um, information contre l'examen, uh, comme um, ça nous a créé fils, ça nous a payé, et schedule pour l'examen. Et aussi toute opportunité nous ni pour scholarship l'autre pays et là aussi il y a ça nous a créé vacancy ça c'est travail entre ministry of education ça que en le website là à mon ça aller à le website là et trouver toute information ça là ministre Saint Jean parle qu'on importance website là nous a créé qui nous a vivant temps technologique et pour raison ça là nous ca croire que si comme ministre éducation nous ca éduquer les enfants pour servir technologie nous en doit ni en website la moun ça à la le website ça là et trouver information ça là on a nouvelles avec à concerner bon traitement qualité produit ça autant important pour la place là parole ça là sur le rôle permanent secrétaire ministre agriculture Harold Gist un workshop qui mettait attention à ses standards de qualité pour place en Dominique semaine passée. Manière où tweeter 
produit là. Après, là, on finit pour pour ça récolter, vous comprenez? Eh ben, on 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 25, vous les mettez 30, vous les mettez toute qualité. Et bien, ça, ça, ça a diminué la qualité des produits hein, qui sont vendus dans les marques. Aussi, aussi, on, on, on nous a fait le packaging. Parce que on nous a mettre un label en l'air qui a marché, qui a fait un dingue, comment il vient là, qui va aller, si c'est chimical, si c'est pas chimical, si c'est organique ou pas, si c'est pas organique. Parce que tout ce bagage là qui a affecté et qui a influencé la qualité. En d'autres nouvelles, le projet qui a concerné la communauté de tourisme, ça c'est ça fait, touristes et puis communauté, qui a tapé attention en territoire de Kalinago. Parole celle-là, c'est le ministre de Kalinago, Honorable Cassius Daru. Honorable Daru, qui a créé le développement de cela, qui a mené le développement de la Kalinago. Les autres programmes, nous avons des choses de communauté de tourisme. Parce que nous avons des choses qui nous regardent, c'est qui manière nous avons. Il y a un changement en nom. Qui manière nous a élevé le communauté de tourisme? Qui manière nous a tapé plus de monde pour visiter Kalinago Territory? Qui manière nous a pris le fantasme pour prendre plus large en haut pour nous faire une économie de circulation dans le territoire? Et puis finalement, le ministre de l'Agriculture a mené des tissus de plantes en en France pour que les habitants puissent planter des tissus de figues. Avant cela, sorti hors officier quarantaine, Monsieur Ran Ansem. C'est plat que oui, je vais moi avril parce que elle nous fait order, je dis nous qui prend six pour huit semaines. Elle va bâmer négocier, elle va se vêtir pique en France, elle va se changer ses plans de lettres, c'est pas plat hein, so il est important parce que c'est on sel plat maman ou capon pour faire d'autres types plats. So, nous ka, si tout le monde est bien, nous avons un premier semaine, mois avril, nous avons ce plan. Eh ça nous pour aller en Portsmouth, en Smart Greenhouse, là, là, nous avons fait Winning, là, eh bien, nous avons fait Hardening. Là. So, en un mois, en juin, pour jour, là, nous avons planté à Kenny ce plan. Ça, là. Le gouvernement dominique a mis attention à ces produits salam à nous en manière pour combattre la maladie Black Sigatoka. Mais mesdames, ça c'est tout pour nous faire un coup pour à présent. Non, moi c'est Marc Fusson saint Au revoir. Coming up next, why drinking warm lemon water is beneficial to your health. Doasco recognizes that clean water is vital to healthy living. Therefore, it spares no effort in providing a clean, safe, and reliable system. Help keep our rivers safe and clean. Do not cut trees along the river banks and do not pollute with garbage, human or animal feces, and chemicals. Think water, think life. Although the obvious benefit of drinking warm lemon water is to boost immunity due to the vitamin C content, there are added benefits to the practice. Drinking warm lemon water also aids in digestion. Other benefits include maintaining the health of your eyes as well as to prevent the formation of wrinkles on your skin. So next time you need a youthful boost, drink a glass of warm lemon water. And that's all for this edition of National Focus. We always welcome your suggestions and comments. Drop us an email at gis at dominica.gov.dm or visit our website news.gov.dm. Like our Facebook page, facebook.com slash gisnewsdominica and follow our Twitter at gisdominica. You can also catch up on past National Focus newscasts on our GIS Dominica YouTube channel. From all of us here on the GIS News Desk, I'm Nisha Charles. And I'm Kadisha St. Louis. Thanks for watching and join us next time on National Focus.